So um, I'm a big fan of your writing, and I, uh, I just wanted to uh, get started. I just wanted to know, um, are you a gamer? Are you a fan of video games? Um, well, yes, as soon as games came, you have to realize I am so old that <laughs> I remember a world without video games. I remember Pong, uh, as, and that was I was already an adult when Pong came out. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, you know, I used to hang out in arcades just to get my, my high score on Super Breakout uh, up as high as possible. You know, I, I miss paddle controllers. It's the only controller that works with Breakout games and Pong games. And so you know, I mean, you try to do it with the PC keys, it just doesn't doesn't work. But uh, you know, I, I was you know there in the arcades uh, back when you could do something besides kill people. Uh, but as the Twitch games uh, took over, then it, it became less and less fun. Plus, I, you know, I got older, my reflexes are slower. So some of these games aren't, aren't for me, but I still uh, am an avid gamer. I, I was actually addicted, and I'm using the word seriously. It was a yeah. serious problem in my life. I was addicted to Civ 2. Uh, Civ 3 came out, and it didn't do what I needed it to do, so I stayed with Civ 2, and I think I must have played that game for seven or eight years. I must have a thousand civilizations that I created. <laughs> I, I, I had to make rules for myself. I would never play a game past 210 AD. However far I got it, <laughs> that was the end of the game. I mean, this is like a drinker saying, okay, I will not drink after midnight, you know. Right. So you, know, you pack in as much as you can before you're sort of falling down drunk at midnight, but hey, you kept your rules. So, <laughs> but I finally was able to give it up last December. And my life has so many more hours in it now. It's just amazing. So yes, I know about games, and I know about ruining your life with games, and I still love them. I'm afraid that I'm probably going to try Civ 4 because I understand that the programmability is back in the game. So. It's an evil confession. I, I'm ashamed. <laughs> I am a game of Cool. Uh, interesting. So the tie-in is really cool with the story, you're writing a story for Advent Rising. Oh, this is, it's, it's really funny. You know, the, the storyline existed already. Donald Mustard and I had talked about it, and he wanted to bring me in early on, you know, and I said, okay, well, make sure I come in when the story isn't set yet. But his idea of set and mine were different. So I, I did a bad job of communicating, because by the time I came in, they already had some levels designed. And by then it's too late to, to change the story. But that was great because it's a great story. So they didn't need me, you know. Uh, they, they had a story that absolutely worked. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I worked on dialogue and uh, establishing character, establishing tone. And I did that for about the first, what, quarter of the game. And, uh, and after that, you know, most of what was going on after that was going to be a fulfillment of what went before. And, and you know, I couldn't see spending two, month, two, two or three more months of my life writing uh, different takes on getting shot at. Uh, and so I felt like my contribution had ended and other people went ahead and finished writing the rest of it. But I feel like I'm still part of the game because I got to got to figure out what they'd say in those crucial first decisive moments. Right. The truth is though, Don Mustard doesn't need, uh, I shouldn't call him Don, Donald Mustard doesn't need anybody like me to, <laughs> to help his work. He can do it all. Cool. Um, also, you know, you've been, you've been tied to an MMO that's in the works. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's the, uh, the uh, Seventh Son, the Album Maker project. And we're really excited about that. I, I think it's going to work. Of course, they're working in the development phase right now where you try to get funding, which means you have to develop what you can afford to do, use it to attract funding, and, and go from there. Right. Have you uh, always been interested in uh, pushing some of your concepts to a persistent world? Because uh, there's well, some detail that... Once persistent worlds uh, came into existence, absolutely. But you know, it's not something you can program in your garage. And so I had to wait until a real... You know, I've, had, I've been approached a lot by people who are doing amateur jobs that I just didn't want to have a bad game made of it. Uh, I wanted it to be somebody who had the resources to do it right, and I think that's what we've got. Cool. And uh, also the movie, Ender's Game, in the works. Well, you know, we're, we're in development hell. Uh, we're on the second phase of, of Warner's option, and uh, we had one team of writers who turned in the script that, that nobody was really happy with, and so we uh, have a new team of writers uh, who are uh, working on it right now, it's, it's uh, Benioff who wrote Troy, who is the head of that team of writers. And, uh, I realize that some people have a different opinion, but I think Troy was brilliant. And uh, a magnificent adaptation that managed to compress everything into a short amount of time without, for me, losing any of the most important values. It created a whole world uh, that, that to me felt real. It felt like the heroic world of Homer. And so I'm, I'm really excited about what they're doing. So we'll see uh, if they can get something in place before the option expires in December. Cool. And you see yourself continuing to push uh, your stories that you've already created into the new media, like I video have, games? Oh, ab absolutely. Uh, in fact, I, I've just gotten into comics recently. I've been writing The Ultimate Iron Man, and, and now uh, the Bell Brothers are going to be doing adaptations, comic adaptations of the Album Maker series and of Worms. And, uh, you know, I, I'm beginning to realize that, that the more I develop it in different media, the more they support each other. Uh -huh. And uh, 
you know, it, it just makes sense to me. Some of my books, you know, like Worms is one of my best novels. Right. It's highly visual, but because it's not part of a series, it's, and it's not new, uh -huh. uh, it just kind of waits for people to, to stumble across it in a bookstore sometime. Uh -huh. But with a graphic novel out there, uh, it will attract new attention to the original book, and the graphic novel in itself, but the book is so visual right. that it, I think it will be a great graphic novel. Uh, the Alvin Maker series you talked about, Worms, or any other titles that you'd really want to push forward into a video game or a film? I, I hate to say it, but not, not all of them. I have right. some that, that wouldn't work at all, but uh, anything that can, yeah, I'm going to exploit it in any medium I can. Uh, <laughs> I love crossing genre boundaries. I started as a playwright. For me, all my novel novelistic work has been crossing genre boundaries to start with, so I've, I've always been somebody who believes that stories can exist in many different, the same story can be done many different ways in many different media. Great. Thanks a lot.